Hey everyone, it's JJ, your friendly neighborhood drone show animator. Today I've got something exciting to share with you guys. We're diving into uh, image mapping for drone shows using Skybrush. Now if you're new here, don't worry, I've made a step-by-step -step guide to help you make your drone show uh, display. So I have the pleasure of working with Skybrush today in Blender. Uh, what you want to do is get your drones ready. I've just created a uh, 20 by 30, so there's going to be 600 drones arranged. And we're about to map this image onto these drones using the Skybrush tool. And then we're going to look at the, the uh, outputs to see everything we can do with that. So it's pretty easy, actually. You just want to upload your image to Blender. If you don't know how to do that, you'll just hit Shift-A, the image, and then you'll go to Reference or Background. And then you'll choose the image. And you could just choose a sunset and then enter it like that. So I'm going to show you the sunset later. But first, we're going to start with the uh, rainbow. So I'll go over here and then you see where it says effect type. Well, first you'll want to click the plus button if you don't already know that to create a, a new light effect. But after you do that, you want to go to effect type and then instead of color ramp, you'll want to go to image. And then once you click image, you want to go to this little panel and then this is where you can add an image or you could just have one already in your scene. If you have one already in your scene, it'll show up. So I'm going to click my rainbow color palette. And right now it is ordered by its index. It's indexed by formation. And indexed by formation is basically just where it assigns a unique value to every single drone, kind of how they already have organized in this panel over here to where the drones are one, two, three, four. So if I click them, you can see that they're kind of ordered. And this is the X output. And so if, if you look at our image from uh, left, left to right, this side, this will be the X axis, and this will be the Y axis. It's it's based on the image and not based on your Blender world scene. So even though that this way is the X axis in my world scene, if you see this red line, that's not how it works. It's based on the image. It's mapped to the image, so or it's mapped on the drones from the image. So the output in the X, this is how it'll be organized. And so that's why you see that from left to right, it goes red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. And um, one thing you can do to change this is right now I have it organized to start at frame one and to last for 250 frames. And so one thing you can do is you can change the output to a variety of different things. And you can see how that'll affect uh, the uh, light effect. So I just changed it to gradient uh, ZYX and that completely flipped uh, the positioning to where um, the mapping would be tr would be rotated uh, 90 degrees. And another cool thing you could do is uh, temporal. Now temporal is one of the uh, coolest slide effects. So what am I doing when I click temporal here? Um, this is my this is my time at the bottom, uh, my playback time. So if you started at zero, just like when you have a regular color ramp, and you, let me up evenly just like when you have a regular color ramp and you want to do kind of like a rainbow effect and you select all these colors and you do a temporal effect when you click play it'll slowly translate through this well if you have an image that is um, organized into different colors uh, based off of their position so this image is organized into different colors based off its position, starting with red, ending with purple. This is the last color. This is the first color. See if you see, if I click first color, uh, this is of this color ramp. This is a whole new light effect that I just created just to give you a demonstration of how these two can be connected in the, in the same way, but they're different at the same time. So right now I have it set the output to first color. So it'll be the first color in this color ramp. And if I set it to last color, It'll be the last color in this color ramp, okay? And with one way I can make it to where it goes through the color ramp is to change it to temporal. And so throughout the time, throughout the time, it'll slowly change from zero to one. Well, with the new tool that we got going on is we no longer have it on a zero to one scale. We have it positioned based off the mapping of our new images. So the output in the X it, and when you change it to temporal, you're not changing it from uh, red to purple. Even though that's what you're doing, you're changing it from the purple. That's not what you're doing. You're changing its input from this side of the picture to this side of the picture. So 
right now it's going to be changing from red to purple because that's just how it goes in the thing but you're changing the output from this side of the x to this side of the x so it's moving along the x-axis and i need to delete this one first because there is a difference because see how let me actually undo that because what you just watched was not the image this was the previous light effect because this light effects are ordered based off of a, a you know a king of the hill type uh ordering system where the bottom one is going to take priority over the top one so this one is old school old school right now is going to take pr priority over tutorial and that's because it is lower than it in the uh, light effects tab so if you watch old school real quick you'll see it has a gradient transition from each between each color which is nice but if we delete that and watch tutorial and have it set to temporal it's going to abruptly change between each color because that's how the picture does it. It abruptly changes between each color. So basically, your output in the X when you set it to temporal, it'll take the in it'll take the input that it sees from the picture and uh, slowly move across the picture until the end of the time. And the time is how you can control how long it takes to go across. So if I set it to 500, it's going to take longer for uh for it to travel all the way across the image. And you could do the same thing, um, consequently, um, with the y-axis. However, for this, uh, so for this particular example, um, you can't. And the reason why is because um, when it, if it was to go down, if, if, all right, so if this row is equal to this, if this top row right here is equal to this top row, which it might, it might, might be opposite, it might be this bottom row, and it was to go down, there's no change in color, so there would be no visual change that you could recognize to be represented. So that's why there's no output change. You might get a little change in these um, because it's not exactly a straight line, and that's why the drones are doing that. But either way, that's that's the that's probably step one that you probably want to know about um, how to, this works and how you can use it. So temporal, and of course, and of course, you can still change the influence. To make it where it's, um, you know, not as impactful, so it's not as there, not as bright, or it doesn't influence the drone so much. Or you can make it random, random and temporal, and of course, changing it in the Y doesn't do anything, so you're gonna want to change it back to that, and then temporal, and then now when you click play, it'll do a sparkle. So pretty cool. It's helpful when uh, if you're deciding your color palette and maybe you want to just stick to images that you've seen and everything like that. So yeah, that's 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 it for the rainbow. So we're going to go on to the, um, the Christmas. So we got Christmas coming around the corner, right guys? Um, for those who uh, celebrate Christmas. Um, and another thing you can do here is you got to recognize is how you can install patterns to be flashes. So flashing is a very common common light effect when making drone shows. I see it all the time. And uh, now what you can do is is uh, the arrangement of your color bands uh, can represent the flashes in your effect. So if I start from zero, this see that's another thing you have to be careful about how these pictures are inserted. So when I inserted this picture, you think it would be this is X and this is Y, but actually. By the way that the color, by the way that the image was created, this it is um this is the x uh, going across, and then this is the y. So that's why when I click the temporal here, and look, I actually did it one more time because this, wait, let me rotate it 180 degrees. This is the zero side, and this is the one side in terms of the x direction, as you can tell because. When I start it off, it goes to zero, so we know it's this either this white or this white. But then as it goes, it switches into the darker red, and the darker red is first. So what is happening here when I click play and it's on temporal? You can see that it's flashing uh, the color pattern uh, established by the image um, as it travels along, uh, like in the x direction. So that's it's really cool. Um, that's just a good way to maybe do some Christmas flashings. Like if you were to add some Christmas music behind this and maybe have it organized into ornaments uh, or presents or Christmas presents, then, um, you know, you could really give it a whole vibe and you don't have to build the light effect. All you have to do is insert the image and then set the duration. And of course you can do some randomness again. 
and just give it like a crazy Christmas feel, crazy, crazy technical Christmas feel. So, yeah, that's how you do that. So that's probably enough with the temporal. Let's just see what it would look like if we do like a picture. So index by formation. And then you want to set it to where it's all right. So now we're going to do the sunset. Whoa, whoa, whoa. As you can see, um, the image here uh, directly corresponds to the image there in terms of its mapping. So this would be ordered in the uh, Z, Y, X. Um, but every single one of these drones has the same Z right now. So that's really not uh, taking any effect. Um, but really, the only thing that's taking an effect is the uh, X output. So yeah, that's how you that's how you map images, and you can um, you can map them like that. And I, I pulled out the sunset to just show off the temporal effect yet again because it's it's how I'm going to be using this uh, probably the most. But another thing you can do is just like with regular um, just like with regular light effects you can uh, add a mesh and only make it to where your target is inside the mesh so now you have like the sunset stuck inside the mesh and maybe maybe you could make this something really cool this this is 600 drones right here so um unless you are animating for a major drone light show company you really won't be projecting whole images you'll just be using the images to produce light effects but if you get the opportunity to work with hundreds and uh, maybe even thousands of drones, the image projection tool will be helpful, especially when you want to uh, do some uh, video sequencing uh, images where you can just uh, do image after image, setting each image worth to, to a single frame. Um, and then it'll, you'll be able to play a video on the drones, which is which is really cool. But you'll need hundreds of drones to do that, maybe even thousands. So and I'll put some examples of what I'm talking about right here. I know High Great has done it. Um, Demoda has done it and even Luma Sky have done it before in the past so um, it's a really cool technique but it's it's pretty advanced in the terms of I say it's advanced but Skybrush just made it to literally where anyone can do it um, so shout out to them and what they're able to do in that regard but um, yeah so they made it pretty simple so that's really awesome it really is you can make now you can do a lot of cool things with this and but in terms of what we're going to be doing or not we use I can't speak for myself, but in terms of low drone quantity, it's like somewhere between like zero to four hundred, you're not really going to be using the image mapping to actually project images. You're going to be using it to to uh, uh, make light effects with the colors of the image. So right now I have it a temporal again. Let's see. And like, let's say you had a sun or like you, you arranged like a sunset and you could just insert your image and then let it slow. Like you had a whole scene where there was a sun right here and then you had a sky. You keep the sun a continuous color, but then change the color of the sky with a, an actual picture of a sunset. So you don't need to create what you think would be a sunset. You could just go online get a color palette of a sunset and then just change it using the temporal effect and that'll be your light effect so new really cool new way to do stuff like that and then of course if you did have enough drones to play an actual picture like this amazing picture of a volcano um, let's let's get rid of this and then do all drones and then index by formation uh, and instead of temporal, we'll do gradients. Look, and then look, you could do a whole picture just placed right onto the drones just by setting it to index by formation and the gradient uh, and the ZYX. Of course, um, you'll, um, you'll need to play with the gradient in terms of which direction the drones are facing. So right now they're flat. So this will work for that, but if they're if they're lifted up, rotated up, you might need a different uh, placing. Let's see if I can actually do that. And if I can, very quickly, but we'll see. Is it still straight? Oh, it is still straight. Okay, cool. So.
we'll do the art comparison. And by the way, shout out, um, shout out Stinkle Toes for this artwork. Looks good, man. So yeah, so you can see that even with 600 drones, the resolution is pretty undistinguishable. I mean, if you have them side by side, you can tell this is the same picture, but you're going to need tons of drones in order to map an actual image, but it looks really cool. So, Well, um, that's pretty much it on how to use uh, this new tool. Um, of course, you can still use the same targeting that we've seen from previous uh, my light effect tutorials about how to use inside the mesh, how to use inside the plane, what gradient means, what temporal means. Um, but basically, um, well, that's cool. Yeah. So yeah, that's all. That's all it takes um, to use the image thing. If you guys have any more questions, you can feel free to email me. Um, I, I will uh, put my uh, website thing down below if you guys want to get in contact with me to collaborate or anything like that. So yeah, I appreciate you guys uh, watching this tutorial. Um, I'm really excited to implement this into my drone shows, whether they go up in the sky or if they're just for videos. So it's really exciting. So uh, thank you everyone. Y'all have a y'all have a good weekend.